Hi and welcome back to another video. My name is Tony and in the last video we did a first look of Synology's DS423 Plus NAS. Today I'm hoping to get the hard drives installed, get DSM installed, and then create the storage pool and volume. So if this is something you think you're interested in, then stick around. Okay, let's get the drives installed. Here is the DS423 Plus, and I have two four terabyte drives, and I wanna thank Synology for including both of these drives in the review package. They have the Synology branding label on them. They are model HAT3300-4T Plus Series SATA, and at the very bottom of the drive, in small print, it says manufactured by Seagate. So let's get both of these drives installed in the unit. We'll start with bay number one. Let's open up the bay by pushing on the top and then pulling out the tray. There are two side plastic pieces that have to come off the tray. Just push from the inside to pop them out. They help hold the drive in place. Once you have both of those out, let's go ahead and get the drive placed in the tray. Make sure it's in there nice and secure and then just reinstall the two side pieces to secure the drive. Now this might be a little tricky with the drive in place, but you should feel them snap in. Once you have them both in place, let's just slide the drive back into the unit all the way in and then push down at the bottom to close. Let's repeat the process for drive, num drive bay number two. All right, now let's go ahead and go through the initial setup and install of DSM. So let's go ahead and get the NAS connected to the network. I happen to have an ethernet cable handy and let's go ahead and get the power plugged in. And I'll just reach around the front and turn the unit on. And we'll give the unit a few minutes to fire up. In the meantime, we'll switch over to the computer once the unit is ready to go and we'll use find.synology.com, hopefully, to find the NAS on the local network. Okay, so the DS423 Plus has booted up. Let's go ahead now and see if we can locate it on the network using find.synology.com. Okay, it looks like it found two devices. I can tell by the number of dots here. This IP address is the address of my DS216 plus two, so we don't want that one. Let's go ahead and click the right arrow. And here it has found one located at 192.168.25.154, which I happen to know is the DS423 plus because I did cross-reference it with the DHCP table on my router. So let's go ahead and click connect. And we're gonna to agree to the terms of the EULA and click next. We're gonna review the privacy statement and we're going to click next or continue. Set up your Synology DS423 Plus now. Let's go ahead and click on install. And now it says automatically download and install the latest DSM 7.2 dash 64570 from Synology website. So that's what we want. Let's go ahead and click on next. We do get a warning saying all data will be deleted on the two drive. We'll click the check mark and then we'll proceed because there's nothing on the drives anyway. They're brand new and click continue. Okay, we're at the Welcome to DSM 7.2 screen. We're gonna go ahead and click the blue start button. We don't have a backup to restore since this is a brand new device. So let's go ahead and click on start. Getting started with your Synology NAS, name your Synology NAS and create an administrator account. So we'll go ahead and we'll call this Lab DS423 Plus. 
And the administrator account will be Tony and my usual Device name must begin with a letter and can include letters, numbers, and underscores or dashes. Something tells me it doesn't like the plus. Let's go ahead and click next. There we go. Select an update option for your Synology NAS. So we have the option to automatically install important DSM and package updates, which Synology is recommending automatically install the latest DSM and packages or notify me when DSM or package updates are available and I will install them manually. And that's what I always like to do, but the choice is yours. Let's go ahead and click next. Create a Synology account to receive more benefits. Well, since this is just a review unit, I'm going to skip this step, but you can go ahead and create it here. You could also create it in the system settings after the fact. And if you already have one, you can actually just use it to sign in here. So, but we're going to skip this step and we're going to skip anyway. It just gives us a reconsideration mes message. Agree to allow Synology to collect data to improve Synology services. I'm not going to agree to this. I'm going to click submit again. The choice is yours on this screen. Okay, so we're at the desktop. It says securely access and share files from anywhere. And it wants to know if we want to install Synology Drive Server, Synology Office, or Synology Photos. I'm going to say no thanks. Maybe we'll do that in another video. Enable two-factor authentication, which I do highly recommend. But again, I'm going to just say for the purpose of this video, no thanks. Again, we can do that in another video as well. Protect your account with adaptive MFA. And right now I'm just going to say I don't want to secure my account. We strongly recommend enabling 2FA or adaptive MFA to protect your account from potential risks. Again, since this is a review video, I'm going to proceed without it. And maybe we can cover that in another video. So now we have DSM successfully installed. DSM 7.2 that is. The next step is to go ahead and create the storage pool and volume. So let's go ahead and we'll get rid of the quick tour message. You can go to DSM help later and learn more about the usages and tips and information about DSM. Okay. Let's go ahead and click create now to create the storage pool and volume. Start to create storage pools and volumes before data can be stored on your Synology NAS. Please create at least one volume and storage pool. So let's go ahead and click on start. And here we're going to pick the actual RAID type. Since we only have two drives in there, here are the available RAID types, SHR, which is Synology Hybrid RAID, RAID 1 Basic, just a bunch of disks, or RAID 0. So we're going to just leave it set to SHR. It requires a minimum of one drive. The default tolerance is one drive. This is a recommended RAID type for beginners. So let's go ahead and click on Next. Please select at least one drive to create the storage pool with SHR. So we're just going to select both drives and click on next. Performing a drive check can automatically reconfigure a drive, therefore reducing the risk of data access errors. So here you have the option of performing the check or skipping the drive check. Again, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to skip the check. But typically, if I was setting this up for production, I would normally perform the drive check just to make sure everything is OK. Let's go ahead and click on next. And we're going to go ahead and modify the allocated size because we have to allocate volume capacity here. So I'm just going to click on max and then click next. And here we have to select a file system. Our options are BTRFS, which is Synology recommended or EXT4. And I'm going to stick with BTRFS because it gives us the option of doing snapshots and replication. So we're going to go ahead and click on next. I'm going to skip encrypt this volume for now. And then we're just going to go ahead and review our settings and then apply. 
All the data on the newly added drives will be erased. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes, again, they're brand new drives, so we're gonna go ahead and say okay. Okay, so it looks like everything went well. You can see we have a system health of healthy, the server name, the IP address of the device. Here you can see drive one and drive two. We have the option to data scrub if we want. We're also getting a notification here to set up notifications. So I'm gonna close that for now. You can enable notifications later at the control panel notification. We're gonna go ahead and say okay. Okay, so there you go. We got the hard drives installed, we got DSM 7.2 installed, and we got the storage pool and volume created. You can see Synology makes it pretty simple to get to this point. However, you do have to know how to respond to some of the questions being presented by the wizard. So if you like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Be sure to check out other videos that I list here up above. Please remember to subscribe, like, and share this video. And I wanna thank you as I do in every video for using the Amazon affiliate links. I know they don't change your price, but they do help out the channel. Once again, my name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions as always. Please stay safe. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.